Okay, welcome to another video. Before we get going, I'm just going to point out I've got a terrible sort of chesty cough today and I'm on the uh, the Lemsips, so hopefully my voice doesn't sound too harsh for this video. Anyway, moving on. So Manjaro have just recently announced the availability of a preview testing image which is featuring the deep in desktop environment. You might remember not too long ago they did actually have a deep in version of Manjaro that was actually available but it did get discontinued. So what we're going to do today is take a very quick look at how it's coming along in this newer version which is featuring the Deepin Desktop version 20. So we're in the live environment right now. We're going to install it to this desktop and just have a very brief run through of the desktop as it stands right now. So we're going to launch the installer which will be Calamari as we're on Manjaro. So British English is good. Europe London is the one. English UK is also all good. And we're going to do the erase disk and like always we are going to set it up for swap with Hibernate to see if swap with Hibernate works on here to suspend to disk. Bearing in mind this is very very sort of beta testing sort of period so don't expect everything to work as it should. So we're going to go next and now we're going to do our login details. So Tyler, we're just going to call this one deep and we're going to do our passwords now. And we are, as always, going to log in automatically and use the same password for the administrator account. Next, install. Now, I'm not going to time this one because obviously this isn't a sort of mainstream release or anything like that. So I'm not too fast how long this one takes to install. But I will take a little look at the time there. So it's 2.32. So what I'm going to do now is pause the video and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, and we are back. And as you can see, the clock has barely moved. So Manjaro really do have these install times down. So what we're going to do now is restart and boot into our freshly installed Manjaro Deepin desktop. Okay, so here we are. Um, we still don't appear to have the rounded corners on Deepin on these Arch installs as it stands. But what we're going to do first of all is check our package manager here in Pamac to see if we've got any updates to grab. And it appears that we do. So we've got a fair few packages that are going to grab an update here. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and we'll come back to it once this has completed. Okay, so that update has now complete. So let's take a little look around. Now these are currently minimal ISO images, so I don't expect there to be too many additional programs and packages installed out of the box. But let's take a little look anyway. So we have a couple of the deep and suite of applications there, like the files manager, the text editor, and indeed the terminal, as well as the control center there and calendar. So what we're going to do then is test out a few applications, see how it's all running at the moment, and we're just going to have a general look around. So let's open up the files manager. Okay, that doesn't appear to be opening. I wonder if we can open it by clicking on the link here on our taskbar. Okay, so that's worked. It's just not seeming to work with the actual application launcher. So I wonder if we was to pin a few more applications, we could open them that way. So let's pin this to our dock, center dock, and let's also pin the terminal there. And we'll pin Firefox. And we'll also pin the control center because we'll take a little look at that. So let's add that to our dock. Oh, it's already on the dock there. And let's also, in fact, we can already get to the PAMAC package manager there just by clicking that. Okay, perfect. So we have the deep and file manager there and the rounded corners appear to be working on the actual application windows. We just don't appear to have it in our bottom panel here. So here's our calendar, that's all working as it should. And of course our control center, we'll go through a couple of the control center options in a moment, like changing the sort of theming to the dark theme, etc. So let's jump into the multitasking view. Okay, that doesn't appear to actually be working either. Does the show desktop button work? Okay, that's working. We just can't appear to get into the show desktop uh, multitasking view at the moment. So I wonder if we can go into the keyboard shortcuts and see if there's a multitasking view keyboard shortcut. No, there isn't. Okay, can we move between desktops like normal? Okay, that's all working as it should be. And can we move windows across desktops? Okay, perfect. And can we do show window spread? I think that's super and W. There we go. So that's working as is super and A. So that's all working. We just can't appear to open the multitasking view in this preview image. I did just notice, I don't think it has the deep in screenshot tool, which is a little bit of a shame because I actually really did quite like that. So I wonder what's handling the screenshots on this version. So do we have any application to do that? Let's test with our print screen key. No, so we've got nothing that's actually handling screenshots at, that I can see at the moment. So if we go into our pictures, 
we can notice that this is empty now, although we did press the screenshot key quite a few times. So I wonder if we could go ahead and install a screenshot tool like perhaps GNOME Screenshot or even the Deepin Screenshot tool. So let's type in Deepin Screenshot. So we've got the Deepin Screenshot tool here. Let's see if we can install that and get some actual screenshot working with the Deepin Screenshot tool. Let's type in our password. Confirm. Now that shouldn't take too long. So we've got to get a few things here. DTK WM, which is required. That's all good. So let's apply that now. Perfect. So I wonder if it's automatically assigned. Now let's press print screen. No. So is there a keyboard shortcut for print screen that's a different? Let's have a look. Let's type in screenshot in here. Okay, so we've got some. So we've got control alt A. Let's give that a go. Control alt A. No, so it's not actually applied to anything at the moment. So if we were to open up the deep in screenshot tool, let's see if that will actually work. Screenshot, here we go. And of course, we can't currently open things for our application launcher. So let's pin that to our taskbar or our dock even. So center dock. Now let's give that a go at taking a little screenshot. Okay, perfect. So that's working as it should. Let's save that and see if that will save it into our files manager. It appears to have done it into our desktop folder there. And as you can see, there is our screenshot. So that at least has worked. We don't appear to have an image viewer installed in this minimal ISO either. So we might want to go ahead and install one of those as well. But as this is just a quick look, we're going to just skip that for the moment because we're not too fussed. So by default, you're going to have the full screen view for your application launcher. But of course, you can go into the categories view, which will give you the sort of panes of each category. And you can move across applications with your directional key or if you was to go into the top level you could then go by category there now something i do need to oh the windows manager's gone a bit crazy with the transparency there something i do need to mention from my last video that i did on deepin i made a bit of a mistake saying you couldn't easily change the size of the taskbar in the newer version because it has removed the sizing from here but a commenter on the video did point out that you can get your mouse and actually drag the size manually which I didn't know until they did point that out. So thank you for whoever did that comment. And that's actually a lot more easy than having to right click. And so I do actually appreciate that change. So if we change our mode into efficient now, because as we can't get the rounded corners, I'd rather just have it in the efficient mode as a taskbar view. Perfect. So what we're going to do then is test out a few applications in the application store. So let's go ahead and install LibreOffice and perhaps GIMP and maybe even... I wonder if the PAMAC has the snap and AUR, um, snap and flat pack support. Let's have a look. So if we go into preferences and type in our password. So if you've watched my previous videos on the Manjaro KDE and GNOME and the other versions, you'll remember that we checked out the sort of preferences in the PAMAC here and it had options for flat pack and snap. They don't appear to have made it in this current testing version of the deep in desktop environment. However, we do have access to the AUR there. So let's go ahead and enable that and close that off. So let's grab a few packages and see if they're all working as they should. So let's grab GIMP, install, and let's also get LibreOffice. And we're just going to get the steel package here. Although you can get the fresh package, it will be somewhere right about there, which will be a newer version of 7.0.1-1. So let's go ahead and apply that. Do I want any of these dependencies for GIMP? I don't think I need them at the moment, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. Now, let's apply that. So there's a fair few packages it's going to get at 46.5 MB. So we're going to minimize this, and let's see what wallpapers we've got out of the box. So let's go to Set Wallpaper. Okay, let's not see what wallpapers we've got out of the box. So at the moment, in this minimal sort of testing image, they haven't got the wallpapers set properly. And as you can see, we don't currently have the screensaver option that was available in the last deep in video that I did. We do have the Windows wallpaper slideshow, but of course we can't actually go through that because there is no wallpapers currently set in there. I wonder if we was to download a wallpaper from the internet, whether we could, in fact, I don't need to go ahead and do that. We've got a picture here. Let's just see if we can set that as a wallpaper. There we go, that's worked, but that's giving me a headache. So let's download a new wallpaper and change the wallpaper up. So if we just go into minimal wallpaper Reddit, no, oh, spelled that wrong. We'll just grab one of the quick, in fact, we're just gonna grab one of these ones here 
and we'll set that as our wallpaper. I wonder if we can set it from Firefox and that will work. So we've got the dialog there that's popped up. Let's click set desktop background. So I haven't noticed any change at the bottom of our panel there and we don't appear to have changed the wallpaper. So let's save this image into our desktop folder and see if we can set it the same as we did with that screenshot there. So let's set that as our wallpaper. Perfect. Okay, so that's all working. We just don't appear to have any out-of-the-box wallpapers already installed. So now let's just open up a few applications and see how everything works so far. So let's open up Writer. Okay, so we've not got the icon theming set correctly for those new packages we've just installed. I wonder if the GIMP icon has been pulled and set. Okay, so the GIMP icon is working all well and good. And of course, it's not launching it. So let's go ahead and pin them to our application launcher. So let's send that to a doc and let's also get Writer and send that to our dock as well. Cool. Okay, so we have an icon there for it. That's not the actual icon though, is it? I don't think. Right, it appears to have picked up the theming all well and good though. And let's open up GIMP and see how GIMP's working. And then what we're gonna do is jump into the control center, test a couple of things out there, but we're not gonna go too in depth because as I said, this is currently a preview testing image. So let's go into our control center and test out the switching of the themes and see if that's currently working. So let's go to dark. Perfect, and it's worked straight away. It's picked it up on LibreOffice. The GIMP Windows title bar there is now in the dark theming. And let's open up our Files Manager. Perfect. Okay, let's also change the um, accent color to green to give it a bit more of a Manjaro kind of vibe. There we go. Right, I did say we were gonna test out hibernation, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So let's see if we can do it the GUI way. So let's go ahead and click Hibernate. And I'm going to pause the video and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we're just booting back up now. Hopefully this has worked. I'm not sure if perhaps if it doesn't work, maybe the GUI's not set up correctly. But I might be talking too soon. No, I'm not. So it hasn't worked. I didn't think it would because it was a lot quicker than it usually would have been. So what we're going to try and do is see if we can summon the hibernation with a terminal. But if not, again, this is a preview image, so I'm not going to hold anything against it. Let's open up the Files Manager and the calendar and then we're just going to summon a hibernate from the terminal and see if that will work. So let's go into our terminal system ctl hibernate and let's cross our fingers and hope that this hibernation is going to work. Okay so unfortunately we also didn't manage to get the hibernate working correctly that way either. So what I'm going to do just to wrap this video up now I've done a fresh reboot so we're going to open up htop and see what the RAM is at a fresh boot and then we're going to kind of wrap it up there. So RAM wise, we're looking at about 660-ish MB at a fresh boot, which again, isn't too bad. And I find it quite impressive that the deep and desktop environment does actually use quite a low amount of RAM considering everything that the desktop does. So to wrap it up, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a fully fleshed out version of the deep and desktop environment make it to be sort of a Manjaro community editions. Cause I think I probably would quite appreciate an Arch-based Manjaro install that's already set up out of the box. I think that would be pretty cool. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.